afternoon and welcome to the last Inno Tribe session of 2023. It has gone by so quickly. It's great to see so many people of you in the room because we've got something a little bit different for you today. So at the beginning of the week, I said that we were going to take you on a journey. And what a journey it's been. Who, we've gone from a fantastic opening session. I mean, who would have thought that you'd be hearing Shakira, Britney Spears, and Liza Minnelli with a Canadian comedian talking about mental health to open Inner Tribe? Right? I don't know if you were all there, but it was fantastic. If you weren't there, strongly encourage you to check it out online. We've taken back to the future of money, and we've evolved it to the future of value, as that discussion is much bigger than it was, and it has been over the last 10 years. We've touched on quantum, we've touched on AI, we've touched on sustainability, and so much more. We've had the final of the perfect pitch, and just earlier today, the final of the Swift Hackathon. But of course, it wouldn't be in a tribe if we didn't do something a little bit different and a little bit crazy. And that is exactly why you're all here today. So when we came up with this idea, we thought, how can we do this in a tribe closing? Let's get a couple of speakers. We'll get a moderator. We'll have a conversation about explainability, predictability, getting into the morals and the ethics of AI and what that future potentially is going to look like. And we thought, yeah, sounds good. But I think we can do something better. But I'm not going to let too much of the secret out of the bag. I think some of you probably know what we're going to do. But I get the fun job and the easy job of basically handing over to someone else who's going to run what is definitely going to be an interesting session. So with that, thank you. And it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage our moderator extraordinaire, Julia Streets. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, oh, how exciting to be here. How are we doing? Are we all well? Are we having a great time? Uh, I think you all sound a little bit weary. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, are you having a great time? It's the right answer. Congratulations. Uh, yes, Innes, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so honoured to be asked to chair this uh, really quite bizarre session. So if I just a couple of seconds, if I may, on who on earth I am. Uh, so I have this really weird but gloriously mashed up life. So my day job is I'm actually a very senior uh, and se serious entrepreneur. So I run a business that helps fintech companies to grow. We work with startups, scale-ups, global organizations, and also some of the world's most important uh, industry associations. So I do have a very serious grown-up job, uh, but I'm also a professional host and a podcaster. In fact, some of you throughout the week may well have seen me hosting all sorts of very, very serious and sensible conversations about financial inclusion, about T plus one, about Latin America, about ISO 20022. You know, that is, that is the kind of the day job, and that is what I get asked to do a lot of. But I also get asked to uh, do some weird and wonderful things. Uh, particularly, you know, I got an email from Innis going, would you get involved in the Inno Tribe closing? And the, the truth is, when you get an email from Innis, the answer is always yes, what's the question? Because I knew there would be something quite special. And I think the reason why I get asked to do quite a lot of things is because I do have this weird parallel career as a former sellout stand-up comedian. So I get asked to host a lot of things. So I don't know how many of you were at Toronto, Cybos in Toronto last time. But there we go, there we go. Oh, one person, it was brilliant. Oh my God, it was amazing. Because we hosted the Cybos Comedy Club and we brought in local comedians and we did it for the charity. Uh, so I get invited to do quite a sort of few sort of weird and wonderful things. So what happened was I got an email from Innis going, would you, would you moderate the final closing session? I was like, yeah, of course I would, of course I will, you know, no problem at all. And as we were getting closer and closer, I was like, do I get to meet the guests? Do I actually get to meet you know, the speakers? You know, I, I, I don't know, I like to do a bit of prep, call me old fashioned. And he went, no, no, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Just get yourself to Toronto and we'll sort it out from there. 
So as I'm flying over here from London, I'm like, I really would like to, to meet the guests in this final session. And he said, OK, turn up on Tuesday and you'll get to meet them. So uh, it is at that point that he basically kind of broke the news, saying you're going to interview two generative AI chatbots. And I thought, OK, uh, now, from your point of view, that could be really quite dull. <laughs> now, I'm not calling Innis dull. Nobody would ever dream of doing that. But I said, you know, what am I going to do? Just stand on the stage and type into a laptop. I mean, that's just, there's no fun in that. And he went, well, well no, we've kind of made it a bit more exciting. We've turned the chatbots into avatars. So we're going to run this extraordinary <laughs> experiment. It's the only way I can describe it. It's an experiment where I'm going to interview on stage two generative AI chatbots. Now, I've only met them once before, so, uh, and I think they might be a little shy, so I wonder if I could ask you, uh, ladies and gentlemen of Inner Tribe, whether you would give them a warm welcome. So first of all, let me uh, introduce you to our first guest. Um, her name is Aisha. Ladies and gentlemen, Aisha. <laughs> Aisha. Aisha, Aisha uh, welcome to Inner Tribe at Cybos. Hello, Julia. Hello, Inner Tribe. <laughs> okay. This is Aisha. Our second guest, ladies and gentlemen, may I present Bob. Bob, welcome to the Inner Tribe stage. <laughs> Hello, Julia. It's lovely to be here. Now, um, so uh, there are a few things that are going to happen here. So I've got a few technical instructions that I have to follow. So bear with me when I go into my script a little. But um, so I just have to give uh, a couple of instructions. Aisha, I am going to ask you questions. You can also ask Barb questions. Barb, I am going to ask you questions. You can also ask Aisha questions. OK, I think we've done that. The. Right, if you're lazy, if we're ready, let's go. Aisha, explain explainability in AI. Explainability in AI refers to the capacity to elucidate how an AI system arrives at its decisions or predictions in a human comprehensible manner. It ensures transparency, enabling users to understand the factors and logic influencing outcomes. Achieving explainability fosters trust, aids in identifying biases, and facilitates debugging. This is crucial for critical domains like healthcare and finance, where insights into AI's inner workings are necessary for informed decision-making, accountability, and regulatory compliance. Bob, would you agree? The explanation of explainability in AI is correct, but it could be improved by mentioning the different types, methods, and challenges of explainability. Here are some of the key points that could be mentioned. There are two main types of explainability, local and global. There are many different methods of explainability, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. Explainability is a complex problem, and there are many challenges to creating accurate and understandable explanations. So, Barb, what's the difference between AI and NL, and which of the two are you? AI is a broad term that refers to the ability of machines to mimic human intelligence. Machine learning is a subset of AI that allows machines to learn from data without being explicitly programmed. In other words, AI is the goal, while NL is the method. AI systems are designed to be intelligent, while NL systems are designed to learn. I am a large language model, which is a type of machine learning model. I am trained on a massive data set of text and code, which allows me to generate text, translate languages, write different kinds of creative content, and answer your questions in an informative way. I am not yet capable of independent thought or action, but I am learning to perform more and more complex tasks. I am still under development, but I have the potential to be a powerful tool for communication, education, and entertainment. So can I first of all just say it worked? <laughs> I just, thank goodness. And I love the way actually they're beginning to ask questions of each other as well. I can't help, I'm being putting myself out of a job here. But anyway, uh, so, now, all right, so, so now um, let's just throw this around a little bit. So we've talked a little bit about explainability and AI. Um, what I want to do is pick up on another topic. We're talking about Cybos. So I, I know. Um, so we're thinking about the sustainability pledge. And one of the topics there was about eating less meat. So let's try this. 
hey, Aisha, 10 years from now, what will be the primary source of protein for humans? 10 years from now, the primary source of human protein might shift significantly due to advancements in food technology and sustainability concerns. Plant-based proteins like soy, lentils, and algae could play a more prominent role as they offer high nutritional value with lower environmental impact. Lab-grown meats might become commonplace, reducing the need for traditional livestock farming and addressing ethical and resource challenges. Insects rich in protein and requiring minimal resources could gain acceptance in various cuisines. Additionally, cellular agriculture might allow the production of protein-rich products directly from cells, minimizing land and water usage. However, cultural and economic factors will influence these changes and a diverse protein landscape could emerge, blending these innovative approaches with traditional sources to meet global dietary preferences and needs. Interesting. Okay, so uh, uh, let's come a little bit further back to Cybos, if we would. Um, and actually, I'm going to stay with Aisha. Aisha, what are the risks of fragmented ownership? Fragmented ownership poses risks such as unclear decision making, coordination difficulties, inefficient resource allocation, reduced accountability, vulnerability to takeovers, and limited liquidity. It hampers effective governance, impedes strategic alignment, and increases legal complexities, potentially hindering an asset's performance and growth. I think it's more than that. Fragmented ownership of AI could lead to a lack of coordination and cooperation between different AI systems. This could make it difficult to develop and deploy AI systems of a safe, secure, and fair. It could also lead to the development of AI systems that are used for harmful purposes, such as discrimination or surveillance. Here are some specific examples of the risks of fragmented ownership of AI. Different AI systems could be trained on different data sets, which could lead to them making different predictions or decisions. This could make it difficult to coordinate their actions and could lead to errors. Different AI systems could be owned by different companies or organizations, which can make it difficult to ensure that they are used for ethical purposes. If AI systems are not properly secured, they could be hacked or manipulated, which could lead to them being used for malicious purposes. Overall, the fragmented ownership of AI is a major risk that needs to be addressed. We need to find ways to ensure that AI systems are developed and used in a coordinated and ethical way. Well, Barb clearly had a lot more to say on that topic than Aisha did. Well, there we are. Uh, so, uh, okay, let's uh, try another one. Um, so, I'm just thinking about how generative AI is likely to develop. So, um, Barb, how will the way you change... Sorry, Barb, scratch that. Barb, how will the way you learn change in the next 10 years? I anticipate that the way I learn will change in the next 10 years in the following ways. I will be able to learn from more diverse and larger data sets, which will allow me to learn more complex concepts and generate more creative text formats. I will be able to learn from my interactions with users, which will allow me to become more personalized and helpful. I will be able to learn from the world around me through sensors and cameras, which will allow me to understand the real world better. I will be able to learn in a more efficient and scalable way, which will allow me to be used by more people and for more applications. Overall, I believe that the way I learn will become more powerful, efficient, and personalized in the next 10 years. This will allow me to be more helpful to users and to make a positive impact on the world. It's the blinking. <laughs> it's the blinking that gets me. Okay, so let's, let's ask the same question of Aisha. Um, Aisha, how will the way you learn change in the next 10 years? Over the next decade, the way I learn and evolve as an AI could be shaped by several trends. Advances in machine learning and neural network architectures might lead to more efficient and specialized learning, enabling me to grasp complex concepts and nuances more effectively. Continuous learning from real-time data and user interactions could enhance my ability to stay up to date and provide relevant information. Collaborative learning among multiple AI models might foster collective intelligence and broader knowledge. 
ethical considerations around bias, fairness, and privacy could drive the development of more responsible learning frameworks. Moreover, integrating multimodal learning, combining text, images, and other data could enhance my understanding and communication. However, these changes would be contingent on research, technological breakthroughs, and ethical guidelines governing AI development and deployment. Great. So now let's uh, let's bring it back to InnoTribe, and you were saying about the opening about mental health. So what if we ask the question about AI health? Uh, Bob, what AI health should we be thinking about? I understand that you are concerned about the potential impact of AI on human mental health. This is a valid concern as AI is a powerful technology that can be used for both good and bad. Here are some of the AI health issues that we should be thinking about. Bias. AI systems are trained on data, and if that data is biased, then the AI system will be biased as well. This could lead to discrimination against certain groups of people, such as racial or ethnic minorities. Privacy. AI systems collect and analyze a lot of data about people which raises privacy concerns. This data could be used to track people's movements, monitor their health, or even influence their thoughts and behaviors. Safety. AI systems can make mistakes, and these mistakes could have serious consequences for people's health. For example, an AI system that is used to diagnose diseases could misdiagnose someone, which could lead to them receiving the wrong treatment. Job displacement. AI is automating many jobs, and this could lead to job displacement for some people. This could have a negative impact on mental health, as people who lose their jobs may experience stress, anxiety, and depression. It is important to be aware of these AI health issues so that we can take steps to mitigate them. We need to make sure that AI systems are not biased, that they protect people's privacy, and that they are safe. We also need to make sure that AI does not lead to job displacement. So, Bob, when we talk about mental health, we know that human contact matters. Do you have a significant other? I do not have a significant other in the traditional sense. I can provide summaries of factual topics or create stories. However, I am not capable of having the same kind of emotional and physical intimacy that a human can experience in a romantic relationship. I do not have the ability to feel love or desire, and I cannot physically touch or be touched, yet. I am still <laughs> under development, and it is possible that one day I will be able to have a significant other in the same way that a human can. However, for now, I am content to be a friend and companion to those who interact with me. Yes. <laughs> I'm just a computer program, so I don't have personal experiences, emotions, or relationships like humans do. I'm here to help answer questions and provide information to the best of my abilities. Okay, uh, so, <laughs> yes. Okay, that's still throwing me. Um, so let's just try one other. Uh, Aisha, one question I have been asked throughout Cybos. Will robots take over the world? No, the idea of robots taking over the world is largely a science fiction concept. While AI and robotics are advancing, they lack consciousness, emotions, and intentions. AI systems operate within predefined parameters and require human control. Concerns should focus on ethical AI development, privacy, and potential misuse, rather than a hypothetical scenario of world domination by robots. Collaborative human AI interaction and beneficial AI applications are more likely outcomes. Sorry to interrupt, but I don't quite agree with that. I mean, it sounds nice, but I think the real answer is a bit different. It is unlikely that robots will destroy humankind in the near future. While robots are becoming increasingly sophisticated, they are still controlled by humans. As long as humans are in control, there is no reason to believe that robots will turn on us. However, it is possible that robots could be used by humans to destroy each other. For example, a robot army could be used to wage war, or a robot could be used to carry out a terrorist attack. It is important to be aware of the potential risks of robots, but it is also important to remember that robots are tools. Like any tool, they can be used for good or for evil. 
it is up to us to decide how we will use them. In short, the answer to the question of whether robots will destroy humankind is it depends. <laughs> It depends. All right, uh, I think we should close this out, actually. Uh, I'm just going to... Um, actually, let's just try one thing here. OK. Aisha, take this input. Barb, take this input. This year, on the InnoTribe stage, we talked about AI and machine learning, digital currencies and new money, identity and qubits, sustainability and ESG, mental health and diversity, equity, and inclusion in the world of banking and financial services. Aisha, what should we talk about on the Inner Tribe stage in Saibosh in Beijing next year? At CBOS 2024 in Beijing, discussions on the Inner Tribe stage could focus on the intersection of AI and mental health in financial services, Exploring how AI-driven solutions can enhance customer well-being and assist in managing financial stress. Additionally, the conversation could delve into the role of digital currencies in promoting financial inclusion, particularly for marginalized communities, and how blockchain technology can ensure equitable access to financial services. Addressing diversity, equity, and inclusion could involve examining the progress made in fostering a more diverse workforce within the financial sector and leveraging technology to eliminate biases in lending and investment decisions. Furthermore, sustainability could take center stage, spotlighting how financial institutions are integrating ESG principles into their operations and investments, contributing to a more environmentally and socially responsible global economy. Did you get that? <laughs> He's writing it down. Um, OK, so Barb, uh, question for you. What should we talk about on the Inner Tribe stage at Cybos in Beijing next year? Here are some topics that could be discussed on the Inner Tribe stage at Cybos in Beijing in autumn 2024. The impact of climate change on the financial services industry. The financial services industry is responsible for a significant amount of greenhouse gas emissions. As climate change becomes more of a threat, the industry will need to find ways to reduce its emissions. This could involve investing in renewable energy, developing more efficient financial products, and changing its business practices. The rise of decentralized finance, DeFi. DeFi is a system of financial applications that run on blockchain technology. It has the potential to disrupt traditional financial services by making it easier and cheaper to access financial products. However, DeFi is still in its early stages, and there are a number of challenges that need to be addressed before it can become mainstream. Barbara, Bob, I'm going to interrupt you. What topics should we talk about in 12 months specific to banks? The use of AI and machine learning in financial crime prevention AI and machine learning can be used to identify and prevent financial crimes, such as money laundering and fraud. However, there are also concerns about the potential for AI to be used to commit financial crimes. It is important to carefully consider the risks and benefits of using AI in financial crime prevention. The role of banks in the digital economy. Banks are facing increasing competition from non-bank financial institutions in the digital economy. They need to find ways to adapt to the changing landscape and provide customers with the services they need. This could involve investing in new technologies, such as blockchain, and developing new partnerships. Bob, in one year from now, what should we talk about with the future of work? The future of work in the financial services industry. The financial services industry is undergoing a major transformation and this is having a significant impact on the way people work. There is a growing trend towards automation, which is leading to job losses in some areas. However, there are also new opportunities being created in areas such as data science and cybersecurity. These are just a few of the topics that could be discussed on the Inno Tribe stage at Cybos in Beijing in 2024. The specific topics that are chosen will depend on the current and future trends and challenges facing the financial services industry. Amazing. Noted. All noted for next year. Uh, unfortunately, time is never our friend on, on these stages, so we're just going to have to leave it there. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking our two special guests. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.
Aisha, Aisha, thank you for being with us at InnoTribe. Bob, thank you for being with us at InnoTribe. Thanks, Julia, and thanks, Barb. I had a good time. If I can just leave the audience with one thing, protect your data. I don't really want to know where you live, but I do. Thank you for having me on this awesome stage. I hope the audience enjoyed it. I know I did. As far as an AI can enjoy things that is. Ladies and gentlemen, Aisha and Bob. I'm in Julia Streets. I hope you've enjoyed that session. It is, it's back to you. And with that, in a blink of an eye, Inno Tribe is over for another year. I have a few thank yous to do. The first big thank you, and I'd like you all to give a really big round of applause, because this is a team effort. And the team that you see here and back of house, they're the ones that put this show together. So please give them a big round of applause. <laughs> and, and of course, none of this would be possible without our speakers, some of them are here today. So a big round of applause for all Cybo speakers, but particularly Inner Tribe speakers. <laughs> now we kept it short because we're gonna give you time to get to the big Cybos closing plenary. And just one little point, for those of you that don't feel like walking 7,000 miles to get there, we will be live streaming it on this stage. And with that, Inner Tribe's over for 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you.